Have you ever had the feeling that something was watching you? Like an elephant? Hi, I'm Jill, and I'm about to introduce you to Callie, who is a dancer, yoga instructor, and incredible artist. I commissioned her to do this beautiful wall treatment behind me for a job, and she did an incredible job. I can't wait for you to meet her. She's going to tell you all about how you can commission an artist for yourself to do something like this in your own home, and she's also going to give you some great tips on how you can do it yourself. I came up with a design concept. Well, let's see, I had the person who commissioned me for the job uh, just set a jungle scene. So they left it really wide open and then it was up to me to kind of decide how I feel the space. They said they wanted the four walls. But what, uh, what happens when uh, someone gives me a broad concept like that? They don't really tell me you know, how dark they want it to be, what specific colors they want. I come to the project with my own, uh, my own style, my own artistic style. Um, so I have this kind of profile of work and I kind of work in more monochromatic, sometimes a little more like tattooed style. So something that was three-dimensional in space, like a jungle scene, was kind of difficult. But what I did was, you know, I took my style and then I took inspiration from plants that I saw and I looked online and I looked at photos and I just got all these different images of artists that had created jungles. And then I started to put together a scene and I tried to de decide on what the important parts were for this space. There's just nothing like dancing in the jungle, dancing in the jungle, it's the best. I know that little kids are going to be in here um, when they're waiting for um, a psychotherapy appointment, you know, they might be distracted, they might feel chaotic, so I wanted to create a space that was kind of soothing and interesting, something that they could come into and feel like they were in a world and maybe taken care of or, you know, kind of in a fantasy place of ease, whatever tension is going on. So as an artist, I'm thinking and bringing to the table all of these different things, like my own sense of style and the way that I create work and what my goal is for the space. I've never done a project this large, being one, two, three, four walls, and since I love challenges, I decided to make it extremely detailed. I wanted detail and I wanted little kids to come up to the wall and look at little frogs and see their eyes and their spots and I made each one of them different. I think there's like 13 frogs in this piece. So I didn't need to do that. Usually murals are a lot much more to be seen from farther away but I signed on to this and to keep the amount of detail consistent throughout the whole thing and I even put birds and butterflies and things in the waiting room. So it just, I tend to go over the top and I think it was my own sense of just signing on to a lot. I enjoy something that is hands-on and that you can see your progress. I've always loved things that I can touch and feel and since I am a dancer and a yoga instructor I love murals because I can work big and I can use my body to do that. I enjoyed having something to be dedicated to in that way that turned into progress. Like at times it was really difficult to come in here and and I would spend all day and feel like I maybe didn't get as much done as I wanted to get done but however at the end of the project I stuck with something and then I have this a thing to sort of that comes to life it literally comes to life and I think that's a beautiful process so what's going on you just hanging out you know have you chased a tiger lately or I don't know so if you'd like to hire an artist for a mural commission, know that it is about communication and collaboration. You may want something very specific, which then you have to communicate clearly with an artist and also get an artist that is able to mold to you. A lot of us come with our own sense of, of style and character and the way that we do things. So look at their portfolio and see if you like kind of the innate qualities with which they approach things. Beautiful things come out of collaboration collaboration because artists can see the space, you know, they're, they're trained to see the space in a different way and so maybe what you have in mind actually can be enhanced by a second viewpoint. So go back and forth and it's okay if you don't have anything that specific, like rely on the artist 
to define it for you because that's that's kind of their job. It's also to paint something, but it's also to say, hey, why am I painting this and how do I get it across to create an environment? And if it's in your home, that's probably what you're wanting to create. I swear I just heard a monkey. Did you guys see a monkey flying above my head? I swear I heard one. Really? Just know if you're wanting to do a project by yourself. Simple things doesn't mean easy. And so something that actually looks very simple in nature, you had to create a big amount of work to whittle it down to its most effective pieces. And to do that means that you have to know what you want, you have to practice. I also say just for simple things like stay in really easy color palettes. So just pick three colors and stick with them. Give yourself some boundaries. If you're wanting to do images on the wall, I suggest practicing ahead of time. Get yourself some big papers and brainstorm a lot and actually get your hand moving and see what it's like to put things from your mind into the physical realization because that is the difficult challenge. You know, I've always wanted to be like Tarzan and Jane, you know? Swing from the trees, just kind of like, woo! And also just a little hint as well is that if you're creating an image on a wall, sometimes you might want to draw it on the wall ahead of time. And know that depending on whether you're using pencil or chalk or car charcoal, you either need paint that covers up that line or you're able to erase that line. So you kind of have to know your materials a little bit. Knowing that it's in your wall and on your wall, it gets a little bit more permanent. So you kind of have to be a little bit like steady and sure before you go off and start painting that. So always warm up, you know, get your mind right, get your concept right, have your motivations, practice and go for it. You know, there's something that color does to a space and there's something that the, the, the design of your life literally can have effects on your mental stability or your sense of peace and knowing that your environment that you create, whether that's an artwork or whether that's the environment you create outside of the world with your friendships, anything like that, just to be intentional with that and to know that that exists and to try to find harmony and peace in your surroundings. Be sure and subscribe to my channel. I teach you all about home decorating. The videos are really fun and informative. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you and really just enjoy having somebody paint something cool like this in your house. And if you wanna tackle it yourself, why not? Get creative, you know, have a good time with it and uh, enjoy the process, enjoy making your home this awesome, personalized place for you to live. Jill, the one thing I don't understand is this TV. <laughs> Can you stand right where the camera is maybe? Hi, I'm Jill, and I'm about to introduce you to Callie, who is a, a, a ooh, ooh, start over. So, the one thing that I did not plan for this space was this TV. Who puts a TV in front of a mural? I don't know. I didn't plan it. But can you tell that the little birds are sitting on top? That's kind of cute, huh? Hi, I'm Jill, and my voice is really bad from a cold. Hi, I'm Jill, and I'm about to introduce you to Callie, who is, uh, start over.